So, you've got your first miniature. Welcome to the hobby. This video will show you how to take it from this to this in just five easy steps. Let's get started. First off, let's talk about what you need. Cheap brushes from the dollar store will do you just fine for most things. Otherwise, this set of wolf bristle brushes have worked great for me if you want something that will last a bit longer for a reasonable price. You'll need your least favorite cup or jar, ideally one that's different to your coffee cup, somewhere to put the paint, which can be as fancy as a wet palette or just a plastic lid from the recycling, a paper towel or tissue to wipe your brush on, and of course, some paint. Which paints? Good question! Some ways to come up with a colour scheme can be from the box art, lore, or looking at other people's miniatures online like Instagram, Reddit, or Discord communities. You could even join our Discord. Or you could just choose your favourite colours, it's completely up to you. You could literally just paint it like your favourite animal or food. I for one am Italian, so my miniature is gonna be pizza themed. Red, brown, yellow, and green. Mmm, delicious. On your quest to go out and buy these colours, you might also encounter different types of paints. Base? Wash? Primer? What does it all mean? I'll show you the difference in a second, but for now, you'll mainly want to choose base or layer paints as well as one wash and one spray primer. Some brands you might see at the hobby store are Citadel, Vallejo, or Army Painter, which all have these types of paints. It doesn't really matter which brand you go for. Miniatures are already expensive, so there's no need to splash out on anything fancy. If there is something you'd like to splash out on, though, I can recommend one thing that will totally 100% make you a better painter. Signing up to my Patreon like all of these cool people and you could get your miniature featured here too. If you don't have the means to support me on Patreon though, a like and subscribe and a comment is free and lets YouTube know that I'm coming to take over the platform. Everyone will be painting miniatures under my rule. Step one, priming. Your miniature is naked and shiny, so you want to prime it first to give the paint a foundation to stick to. Stick your mini on a piece of cardboard with blue tack or tape. If you have multiple miniatures, you can stick them all together and prime them all at once. Before you get to press the button though, make sure to shake it thoroughly. Then just point it towards the mini and start spraying. Do multiple quick short spurts and make sure you cover all the crevices of the mini, even the underside. A neutral mid-tone like this grey is a good colour to start with. A quick pro tip is to make sure you inhale all of the fumes. Trust me, it makes you a better painter. Step 2. Base coats. Time to put on some colour! This miniature might look tiny, but you actually don't need to use the smallest brush to paint it. In fact, it can be really slow and tedious if you do. So use a bigger brush like this one to start with. Get a bit of your first colour on your palette and thin it down with a bit of water. The paint straight out of the pot is usually too thick and will clog up the details and cause ugly streaks on your miniature. Get the paint on the tip of your brush and just slap it on the mini. It doesn't matter if you make any mistakes or go outside the lines at this point, we just want to get this first colour all over the parts you want it to go. It might take a couple of coats to get a solid coverage of your colour. Some paints are more or less opaque than others and will require different numbers of layers, but it's always better to do multiple thin coats than one thick one. When you're ready to move on to the next colour, wash the paintbrush in your cup of water, not coffee, and wipe it off on the paper. Once you start painting your next colour, you'll see that you can just paint over any mistakes you made with the first one. But if you accidentally touch a part that you already painted, just go back to the previous colour and touch it up. Don't worry, even experienced painters have this process of going back and forth between colours and fixing mistakes. That's just what happens when you're painting tiny things. Then just go around the mini and paint in all the different parts in the same way. If there's a specific colour you want, don't be afraid to mix the paints you have as well. Step 3. Shades. It's time to add the miracle substance of shade paints. This stuff is literally liquid skill. Essentially, it's just much thinner paint which will run into all the nooks and crannies and paint shadows there so that you don't have to do it yourself. Agrax Earthshade and Null Noil are the two holy grails of miniature painting and will work well on pretty much any colour, but you're welcome to choose whatever shade colour you want. All you have to do is load some onto your brush and slap it all over your mini. By applying the same wash over your whole miniature, it will tie all your different colours together. My top tip for shade paints is to direct the paint where you want it to go by stroking it away from the bright points and into the shadows. Also make sure that there isn't too much pooling in one place or it can dry into a blobby mess. If you ever get too much paint of any type on your mini, simply grab a clean dry brush and soak it up. Or you could opt for the professional finger swiping technique. After applying your shade all over, you might find some large flat surfaces that look a bit splotchy. Go back over any of these spots with the original base colour you used, but paint around those nice dark recesses this time. Now, you could leave your mini here and be perfectly ready to throw them at your opponent in the game, but if you'd like other people to go, hey, that's a pretty good looking mini, while throwing them at your opponent, keep watching. Step 4. Highlights. To make your colours pop even more, we can go back over them with a highlight colour just on the highest points. You can either pick up another colour that's similar to your base colour but a bit brighter, or you can simply mix in a little bit of white with your colour to get a lighter tone. 
Make sure to only get a little bit of paint on your brush this time. Hold it at a 45 degree angle to the edge you're painting and stroke along the length of it. This is a technique called edge highlighting. For some extra dirty detail, you can try dry brushing as well. Get a little bit of paint on your brush and wipe most of it off. Then just lightly brush all over your miniature. You want to be really light with your brush here. You can test it on your napkin or hand first to practice and make sure you're not going to leave any large streaks on your mini. Using silver or dark brown will make it look like there's a bit of dirt or chipped paint on your mini. This is a really quick and easy way to get lots of detail on your model. But if you like a nice clean looking mini, you don't have to do this. The final part to paint is the lenses or the eyes of your miniature. Accuracy and patience is the key here. This is where you can break out your smallest brush and twist it on the palette to get a nice sharp point. Ignore what your parents taught you. Put your elbows on the table and lock your palms together for best painting stability. Doing a small stroke of paint is also easier than trying to poke a dot on. Come in from the side with just a tiny bit of paint loaded onto your brush and gently stroke that eye. If you make a mistake or miss the spot, you can always go back over the edges. If you ever mess up real bad, always remember you can go back and paint over any mistakes and try again. If you're painting naked eyeballs, you might think that white and black is the obvious choice, but I would actually recommend using a slightly off-white and a typical eye colour like brown or dark green for the pupils. After you've got your white painted in with a stroke, we'll need a tiny dot for the pupil. Poking is actually the more effective option here. Hold your breath and just go for it! Once you're happy with them, cover them with a wash to neaten them up and make them match the rest of the miniature. Step 5. Basing! The final step is to make a base for your mini. This will really elevate your paint job and make a mini feel like it's in a real environment. There are tons of different ways to make bases, which is why it's one of my favourite steps. You can really go wild with creativity. The easiest way is to just pick up some texture paints like these from Citadel. Vallejo also has similar ones for cheaper. All you need to do with these is slap it on the base and that's pretty much it. These texture paints can really ruin your nice brushes, so use a brush you don't really care about. Even just a stick or piece of sprue will do, you don't need to splash out on any fancy sculpting tools. If you get some on your miniature, don't worry, it makes it look like the miniature's actually been walking in the terrain, their clothing and armour is bound to get a little dirty. These ones do take a bit of a long time to dry, so sometimes it's even best to just leave them overnight. If you want to take your base to the next level, you can even try dry brushing again to really highlight the texture on that base. Also consider adding a grass tuft or two because they're just so cute and easy to apply and add so much interest to your model. They come in all sorts of flavours for whatever planet your miniature is on. And finally, no miniature is complete without a nice clean rim job. And there you have it! Congratulations, your first painted miniature in five steps. You're now officially a Warhammer nerd! Whatever you do, never get rid of this first miniature. It's always great to look back at where you started and be able to see how much you've improved with each miniature. And hopefully, years to come, it will be a treasured memory of your first step into this hobby. If you'd like to dive in deeper and learn some more, check out this next video about more basing ideas. There's literally so many cool things you can do with bases. So please, steal my ideas. Literally, they're free. Just take them. Click on the video.